What's up everyone, I'm Ujemma, and this is part three and the final part to building out our tier list. In our first video, we focused on building out the board with basic HTML and CSS. We also got introduced to the drag and drop API along with the data transfer API. In the second video, we focused on making our board more dynamic so we could add cards, include images, delete those cards, and then also incorporate a card bank so when we add a new card, they don't automatically just get sorted in our tier list, they'll just drop down in our card bank. In this video, we're going to focus on persisting the data that we'll be generating in this tier list. More specifically, when we refresh the page, we should still see all the same cards with their images in the correct tier. We're going to be looking at the local storage interface, which allows us to save data all inside the browser without having to interact with any backend database or server. If this sounds interesting, let's get started. Here I have my Chrome DevTools open. The web's local storage interface allows applications to save data specific to their page. So a site can save information that only relates to that site. You can't save local storage for any other site on the web or for any other project. So to get a better sense of what local storage looks like, I'm going to navigate over to the application tab and then under storage, click on the local storage tab. And then you should see your current site's URL underneath local storage. This is Chrome's way of showcasing what kind of data is currently being persisted for your current site. And you can see that there's a key and value tab. So by the end of the day, local storage is just a really big object with key value pairs that's associated with the site that you're currently working on. So inside our append image function, I'm going to be taking a closer look at the reader.onload callback function that we specified. So here we're setting the image's source to the event target result. This happens when we upload an image from our image upload dialog inside our application. So inside reader.onload, I actually want to save the data to local storage. So when we create a card in the first place, we want to automatically persist that card in local storage. So I'm going to get a hold of our application's local storage by calling window.localStorage. And I want to call the function setItem, which takes in a key and a value, which both have to be strings. So my key is going to be my card's ID, and my value is going to be card data. I'm going to create card data. I'm going to create the card data constant. Card data has image source as a key, and we're going to set that to the image.source that we assigned previously. I'm going to change it to a colon. And the second key is going to be row. So the idea that I had is that I want to keep track of the last row that the card was in. So when we refresh the page, we can plop that card back into the correct row. Because our rows are generic, we want to grab hold of the labels instead of the rows because they have the more distinct information of which tier we're operating in. So we have card.parentNode.querySelector.label. This will grab hold of the label that the card is currently located. I want to grab the label's inner text so I know exactly which label that we're dealing with. So I'm going to do dot inner text. There is an edge case that I do want to point out. You can have a card that's inside the card bank which doesn't have a div with the class label. So this right here will throw an error if we try to access a non-existent label DOM element. So this is an advanced concept, so don't worry if this might be kind of confusing, but I'm going to place a question mark before the dot for inner text. This basically says anything that's before the question mark, if it resolves to undefined, and then we try to query inside of it to get inner text, don't throw an error. This is a lot cleaner than having to use a try-catch block. Um, but it's completely understandable if this can be kind of confusing, but you definitely have to add that question mark unless you want errors to be thrown in your code. So the thing that we have to remember about the set item function is that the second parameter or the value has to be a string, but because card data is an object, we have to stringify it using the json.stringify function. json.stringify just takes in an object and then it returns a string representation of that object. So you can see here, if we pass in, in my comment that I'm writing out, json.stringify card data, it's going to return back to us a string format of the object that we just created. So we would see image source and row, and this would all just be in a string. So I'm going to upload Naruto, and you can see here that our key is a number, and then we have the data as image source. And you notice that our row doesn't exist because we dropped the inside of our card bank. So now I'm inside my rows file and now I want to update the local storage. Whenever we drop the card in a new tier, we want to update its location. So again, I'm going to use window.localStorage and use set item. I'm going to get the drag cards ID and then I'm going to pass in the stringified version of card data. So let's build out card data. So here I have my constant card data 
and then I have my key image source, which is going to be given to us by calling drag card query selector, and then the image, and then its source. Each card that we generate will have an image DOM element as a child, and then we can get the image's source with dot source. So for a row value, we want to do event.target.query selector, and then we want to get the label and then get its inner text. The reason why we want to get the event target, which is the current row that we're operating in, and then get its label, is so that we're getting the current row that the card is in, instead of getting the last row that the card was in. So I'm going to upload Naruto, and then I'm going to drop it in my tier list. And you can see here, we're at row A, and then B, C, D, F, yeah. So when we refresh the page, we want to grab all of our data from local storage and then render our cards and place them in the correct spots with the correct images. So the way that I'm going to do that is create another JavaScript file called index.js, which is just going to hold the logic for when our window is first loaded. I'm going to use window.onload and set a function to that. So this function gets called when we first load up our page. I'm going to grab all the keys from our local storage with object.keys window local storage. Object.keys takes in an object and then just returns all the keys from that object. So you can see here, I have an array of all the keys inside local storage. Since keys is an array, I'm gonna loop through each key calling for each. And then for each key, I wanna grab the card data from window local storage, and I'm gonna use the function get item and pass in the key that I have. I'm gonna print this out just to make sure that I'm grabbing the data as expected. So you can see here, I am printing out a string representation of my object. That's why everything's so, <laughs> so crazy when I hover over it. But this is a string. But I want my card data to be in the format of an object so I can index into it. So I'm going to use json.parse, which is the opposite to json.stringify. So now I'm dealing with an actual object that I can index into and use however I would use an object. So instead of introducing more files in our project that only have like one function definition, I'm going to move our window.onload function inside of our cards.js file and then put it at the bottom of our file. Typically, you would want to separate out this logic, but for the simplicity of this tutorial, I'm just going to put it at the bottom of our cards.js file. So now that we have the function inside cards.js, I want to create a card once I get the card data for each key that I come across from local storage. So the way that I'm going to do that is uh, call the create card function, pass in the key that I have along with the card data. And that's pretty much what we want to do on this front. But now we have to update our create card function so it can take in those two parameters. So I'm going to say it takes an ID and card data. Um, what I want to do is prioritize the ID that's passed into the function before I create a new ID with date.now. So a really quick and clean shorthand of doing this is using ID double pipe sign date.now. This basically says if ID turns out to be a falsity value, meaning that it is false, zero, undefined, not a number, null, whatever the case may be, then we're going to return date.now. I covered this topic of operators in my short circuit evaluation video. If you want a better and deeper understanding about short circuit evaluation and operators in JavaScript, I highly suggest you go watching that video. So now that we have that working in our favor, we have to handle card data. So card data has our image data along with the tier that our card is being rendered in. The first thing that I want to do is check to see if the card data has image source. If it doesn't, then I'm going to run through this entire append image function that I created before. But if it does have image source, I want to skip that entire function and just upload the image data from local storage into an image object and then just append that new image object inside of our card. So here I'm creating a new image and then I'm setting its source to the card's data image source. And then I'm going to append that image to our card. We can skip that entire process of setting an input and setting the attribute. We don't have to call up the files upload dialog. So back down inside of our window onload function, create card returns the card that we want to render. So I'm going to assign that card to loaded card. So now I want to get the last row that the card was in before we refreshed or loaded up the page. So how I'm going to do that is call document.querySelector all and get all the rows on my board. And then I have another variable called correct row.
I'm gonna update row to rows. And here what I wanna do is convert our rows array into a proper array so we can call the find function on it. And then I wanna find the row that has the label that's inside our car data. So I'm gonna get the rows label and then I'm gonna grab a hold of its inner text and check to see if it's equal to our card data's row. And if it is, we're gonna return back that single row. And with that row, we can then append our loaded card on it. So here I'm just going to, so here I'm just printing out to make sure that I'm getting a row. So we can't forget to add the pointer events none styling so we can not drag the image. So here we can drag the card across our board. And when we refresh the page, it gets loaded up on the last tier that we're at. So it looks like we have an error. So in our if statement inside create card, we not only want to check to see if card data's image source exists, but if card data exists in the first place. So here I'm going to pull up Naruto again and drag and drop so we don't have any errors thrown. I want to be able to add a new card, Tokyo Ghoul. So we can see here when I refresh the page, we have two Naruto images. Inside our window on load function, we want to just wrap correct row.appendChild inside a check to see if the row exists in the first place. If the row doesn't exist, meaning that we couldn't find a row that the card was last seen in, then we're just going to append that new card that we loaded from our database into our card bank. So here I have card bank.appendChild, and then I'm going to append our loaded card. And then I'm just going to create card bank. Uh, using the document.query selector and then do hashtag bank. So now that we have the card bank, we've reloaded the page and we can see that we have Tokyo Ghoul in our card bank without any errors being thrown. So we can throw it around our page. So we can see here that it's showing up in the last tiers that we we're just at. So the last thing that we want to do is actually remove the card and when we refresh the page that information gets persisted. So when we refresh you can see that the cards reappear because in our local storage the data doesn't get deleted. So inside our delete card function we're going to use window.localStorage.removeItem and then we're going to pass in the event target's ID which is the card that we were just deleting. So you can see here in our local storage the key gets removed along with its value when we delete. So deleting the last card here, so there's nothing in the database. And when we add a card, we can see that we only have one value in the database. So we can drag it around, refresh the page, and that one anime is on our board. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more JavaScript and web dev content. You can also follow me on Twitter where I talk about JavaScript and a variety of things. Feel free to DM me if you wanna talk. And now you have a tier list. I hope that you guys can play around with it, make it more customized to your personal likings, do whatever you want to do with it. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.